Hey gang, it's JC and this is the Daily Dose for Monday, July 11th, 2011, a combined venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Brentwood. Great archives, top of the page, eye candy along the bottom of the page, sexually speaking with Dr. Kathy Naughton from the Center for Sexual Health, right below that. And over to the left here, our rock and roll poll question results from Friday. What are your feelings about the VP Fair? Number one answer, I wouldn't be caught dead at the VP Fair with 69% of the vote. That's higher than I thought it was going to be. Second place answer, if we do go, it's only for the fireworks and one of the bigger music acts, 31% of you, and 0% of you said we pretty much go every year. Even more extreme than the results that I was anticipating. All right, today's Rock and Roll poll question, what grade would you give the St. Louis Cardinals for the first half of the 2011 season. I'm going to do my evaluation here in just a couple of seconds. A, B, C, D, or F? What grade would you give the Cardinals for the first half of the 2011 season? We'll have results for you tomorrow. Uh, very, very hot day. i got some things to talk about about that here in just a couple of seconds. Another heat advisory here in the city of St. Louis. We have a ball game tonight at 6.30 at Forest Park, and they said the heat index may be 117 degrees. I like the heat, but this is getting ridiculous. Anyhow, you go into the Warenberg Theaters, they get that special deal today. You can uh, see any movie um, starting before 4 p.m., air conditioning, and they turn it up real high there in the Warenberg Theaters. And also you got the beverages and everything like that. The 3D, the IMAX, and the mega screen charges still apply. But other than that, you get a great deal at the Warenberg Theaters. And we're great to have, uh, we're very, very appreciative to have the gang from Warenberg as part of the show. It was funny, looking at the ballpark yesterday, as soon as the game was over at Bush Stadium, they started digging up the turf. You know, when you are down there at the ballpark, whether you're part of one of the uh, groups that is being honored or whether you're a member of the media or something like that, they are extremely, extremely vigilant about people going out on the grass. You're not allowed on that grass under any circumstances. And yet they dug it all up for the U2 concert this weekend. So it's turning into a whole freak show there. I want to say thank you to everybody who got us involved with El Monstero. I missed the boat on this for many years. This is the uh, Pink Floyd tribute band made up of local musicians here in St. Louis. And they do it at the pageant every Christmas. And they sell out like six, seven, eight, nine shows every year at the pageant. They decided to do it at Jefferson Barracks on Saturday night. And they had 7,000 plus there. And it was just, it was indescribable. You watch this thing and it's like, there's no way that this is a local band. This is a national touring company with all the effects and the fireworks. And they had a helicopter flyover during another brick in the wall. It was just an unbelievable show. I have to tell you, though, you heard me say moments ago that I love the heat. And I do. I love it when it's hot outside. And apparently, I can pitch a seven-inning baseball game in 97-degree heat. And I've done that a couple of times since I started playing again in the men's senior baseball league here in St. Louis. And there was a Father's Day game two years ago, game time temperature, 97 degrees at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I pitched a seven-inning game and won, by the way, by a score of 4-3. to three. So I still remember that game. So that having been said, apparently I can do all that, and I love the heat, but apparently I have trouble in other circumstances. You may even have heard about this by now, but let me just tell you so you hear it from the horse's mouth. So I was working here at the house all day on Saturday. We're getting ready to sell the house, and we're going to be moving here in a couple of weeks. And um, maybe months, we'll see. <laughs> but anyhow, um, so I'm working all day, just working feverishly around the house. And it was about 100 degrees on Saturday. And uh, at one point, Triple C says to me, Are, you haven't eaten anything. You're going to eat at the show tonight. I said, yeah, we'll grab some food tonight. That'll be great. So we get to Jefferson Barracks, and it's hot, and I'm standing in line for food, and 20 minutes after 7, they make the announcement that the food has run out, so there's no food, so now i got an empty stomach. So the next kiosk we see is for beer. So I have two quick schlafflies, and do a little schmoozing, and then sit down for the show. And at some point during the show, I don't know what happened, but there was choking uh, cigarette, cigar, and pot smoke to the point where it's like, am I breathing any air at this point or am I just breathing carcinogens? Am I just breathing smoke at this point? So I'm sitting there and I'm enjoying the show and about halfway through, all I know is the next voice I hear is from the paramedics. 
That's right. Now, I never passed out or anything like that, but I went into like this altered state, and Triple C tells me that there was sweat just pouring off my body, and she'd towel me down, and 30 seconds later, I'd be wringing wet again. And I don't know what happened, but it sounds like maybe I was on the verge of suffering from dehydration. Now, again, it was stupid for me to not eat anything and then have beer on an empty stomach when it was hot and humid, and then I go, and you have that sensory overload from the show, and then, uh, and then all that smoke. But I don't know what happened, but for a few minutes there, I was, I was, I never passed out. I was just sitting in the chair, but I was like in some sort of altered state. So a big thanks to the paramedics who came over and gave me some water and a wet towel and everything like that. And uh, it almost got sort of ugly there, but uh, don't fool around with this stuff, okay? Learn from what happened to me because, um, you know, this is, you know, 117 degree heat index later on today. Don't mess around with this stuff. All right, time for our uh, St. Louis Cardinals midseason report card. Cardinals are 49 and 43, tied for first place with the Milwaukee Brewers. Who would have imagined that? I know the Brewers are supposed to have a good team and everything, but that's still sort of surprising to see. And I know injuries have obviously had a very, very dramatic impact on this team and its performance this year, but every team has to play with injuries. So let's just start in the bullpen. And we still have too many questions with the release of Ryan Franklin and that train wreck and Tony and Dunk just insisting on leaving a place open on the roster for him, even though Ryan Franklin wasn't even playing for much of the first half of the season. But uh, anyhow, you know, you got Salas. I don't know what Trevor Miller's deal is. That guy was lights out up until this year. You put Trevor Miller out there and you just go, go out and have a beer and come back and the Cardinals win. And it's not so automatic. So i got to give the bullpen a C- minus so far in the first half of the year. Pitching. Starting pitching. All right. <clears throat> Get a little concerned about Jake Westbrook. Jaime Garcia, solid. When he's bad, he's terrible. When he's great, he's awesome. Kyle Loesch, he's back, and that's a great story to see. Chris Carpenter. Now, what has happened to Carp this season would bring a lot of major league pitchers down, and they would just start flinging it up there and go, look, if you're not going to give me run production and I'm only going to have you know a couple of smidgens of wins here and I'm going to have all these losses, that would really that would take out a lot of guys. And Carpenter's out there still throwing so, I don't know. I think our starting uh, force has to go deeper into these games. I'm going to give him a C for the first half of the season. Third base, Freeze, Descalso. We've got to give him a B plus. Shortstop, the Riot. Okay, too many errors by Ryan Terrio. I don't know really what's going on over there, but he's a great leadoff man. 32 RBIs already this season. I'm going to give him a B, and I know that's going to be something that people are going to give me heat about. Second base, skip out for pretty much most of the first half of the season. Variety of subs, Punto, and those guys, I'll give them a C at second base. First base, Albert. Watch that average. It's creeping up. It's in the 280s right now, and before too long, you're going to look, and he's going to be at 300 again. So despite the horror of watching Albert get injured and watch him struggle at the plate, uh, I'll still give him a B because he is really on the road to getting that batting average back, and I think the second half of the season is going to be okay. Catching, Yachty, Cruz, grade A, the only A I've given away so far. Outfield, Holiday, Stud, Berkman, one of the best stories in all of Major League Baseball so far this year. John Jay, guy gives 100%, never gets cheated out of an at-bat. He's got speed, he's got defense, he's got a great bat. I'm giving our outfield an A with a giant asterisk. Okay, and that asterisk is Colby Rasmus. Dude's hitting 188 in his last 36 games, 246 for the season. Now he's got his dad trying to correct his swing. Um, defense, atrocious. Absolutely atrocious. Uh, he's not taking charge, and a center fielder that doesn't take charge, for my money, is useless. He's not getting good jumps. When he does get to a catchable ball and has to dive, he almost always misses it. His arm is very inconsistent. I don't think he has a bad arm, but I've seen too many of these plays where he throws to second base on four bounces or throws to the plate on six bounces. I don't know what's going on. This guy is this generation's J.D. Drew. Um, he's got all the talent, the ability in the world, and he's not using it. This is never going to be corrected. I'm telling you, he's never going to get this right. Uh, I give him a grade D. And I really think the Cardinals ought to make a trade here. If we can get some pitching, we can get uh, a couple of other things that we need for this team. I say you trade uh, Colby Rasmus. He'll probably go somewhere and knock the cover off the ball, but I don't care. I, I think that I've seen enough. I've seen enough of Colby Rasmus, and I think they should trade him. So summarizing, 
okay, we're tied for first place, but the fans are still very restless, and I can understand that. People are nervous because we have a lot of holes. We're in a weak division, and so I think that's really the story. I will give the Cardinals a B for the first half of the season because they're tied for first place with a giant asterisk that goes with it. All right, I, I'm already running over in time here, so I'm going to cut right to the chase here, get to the end of things, and that includes my archives. Back in 1970, this guy by the name of Eric Weber put out this book, and three million copies later, I think he did an update in 2002 or something like that, three million of these things. I have excerpted a couple of pages, page 1 and page 85 on J.C.'s Eye Candy. You can look at it right now. It's right below what you're looking at right now. This guy's got to be kidding with this thing. Um, just look at those two pages alone, and, and you'll get the whole story. All right, uh, as we said, J.C.'s Rock and Roll Poll question today, what do you give the Cardinals as your grade for the first half of the season, A, B, C, D, or F? And we'll just forge ahead here. Joe Bonwich, restaurant critic and food writer for the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, on with us in the 1 o'clock hour today. Also, we have Muni tickets and the gang from TMZ. Eric Mink will be along tomorrow. He has seen the Kurt Flood documentary on HBO that's going to air later this week. And he will tell all later in the week. We have the Emmy nominations. We'll have the gang from TV Guide on the air. And, of course, Smash and Joe Marlotti and... Uh, our legal eagle, Scott Sherman, and all that. We have a lot of stuff on this show. Don't forget to check out Dr. Kathy Naughton. And speaking sexually, part of jcontheline.com, we scour the universe and the Internet for stories about couples and sex and people hooking up. And we update on Mondays and Thursdays, so go check that out, too. In the meantime, that's it. JC's Daily Dose for Monday, July 11th, 2011, a combined venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Brentwood. In the meantime, we've beaten this one to death. Have a good one. See you later. Bye.